Right guys, welcome to episode 8 of Rail Car Restorers on the Road. Here you find us at the brand new built Corwin station with the glorious sounding Class 104 in the background. Yep, and uh, in this video we're hoping to take you around the very rare 109 as well as the um, brand new into traffic 127 that's had a bit of a cosmetic uh, res restoration done on it and looks quite nice. We're also hoping to go down to the shed at Pentrafell Inn and see the work that's going on with the Class 105. Right guys, so here we are in Pentrafellon Yard. We're now about to go through some of the group's units here on the Langoflin Railway. And uh, do excuse us if anything starts up, switches off. Uh, we're currently here uh, early on the Sunday morning to get these shots for you. Uh, so yeah, a little bit, you know, red eyed and um, obviously people are trying to uh, get these units ready for running. So equally, we're not being in their way. So, but we hope you enjoy. So first, come first. We are on this 109 and then maybe onto the 127 and then onto the 105. Right guys, so here we are inside the unique Wickham 109 unit. The only one left uh, is a lovely unit and here we are inside the cab. As you can see it's quite a unique cab uh, layout setup as far as driving it goes with all the controls gauges on the, uh, on the slant. Kind of similar to a 105, but not fully. Just moving inside of the unit. Right guys, so now we are in the passenger saloon of the 109. As you'll see, it has this very nice original interior with a nice original mock-up. It does look lovely. It's had heritage lottery funding back in the day, around 2004, this return to traffic after being withdrawn from BR as a managing director's saloon um, of which is how it survived as it is a one of one unit this was originally built for the eastern region on BR so close to home for us it's a lovely unit and we're glad to see it preserved it's moving on through the interior as you'll see the bulkheads have got this nice curvature to them the original lighting very nice doors. I'm not sure what wood that is made out of but it does look lovely. Moving on through the unit, this is the power car of the two, the other being the trailer car. Has obviously various saloons just like our own unit does. Into the guards van. Very different to a 117 guards van in especially the layout but is a very nice restored unit throughout. Moving into the trailer car where things are a lot quieter. This has a toilet in it. This has more seating and a first class 
at the other end of the unit which is especially nice on this unit for viewing on this railway all the lovely views that Langoflin has to offer here's the first class section right guys we're now going to talk about the underneath right here we are the underneath of the 109 now moving up similar sort of setup to ours heaters sort of same powertrain etc Leyland 680 engines ticking over nicely well they were until they were turned off <laughs> uh, moving on the rest of the unit bogies and under frame again very similar to ours just slightly different bogey designs as, as all DMU seem to have normal sort of stuff under a trailer car but a different vista for you all underneath uh, a Wickham 109 Right guys, we are in class 127, number 51628, and uh, this unit was built in 1960 by BR and Derby, uh, hence the Derby cab on the front. It was originally uh, employed to do the London to Bedford services out of London St Pancras, um, which was eventually replaced by EMUs. This was part of a four car set originally, um, before withdrawal, but this is just preserved as its one vehicle, a DMBS. The rest of the vehicles are not with it. As you can see, very much like our 117, it has the same body style, even window rubbers. It's very identical, apart from these high back seats, which only these and 12, uh, 127s and 115s had. So a very similar unit. As you'll see, it's got some funky colored four mica in it as well, um, which is quite nice. But being withdrawn pre-overhaul around the 1980s, um, as I think, I believe it was withdrawn in the 70s, very late 70s. It has the original for my car, oval BR mirrors, which you'll see in a minute, uh, which are all nice little touches we'd like to put back in our 117. So as you'll see, the camera pans around now, you'll see the oval mirrors that we are looking to replicate. That is this unit. Right guys, so here we are in front of the 127 now. This is a exceptionally strange beast to us, or most DMU people, as it is fitted with Rolls-Royce engines, as we're now about to see. I'm not sure of all the details of this unit, but a chap called John, he, uh, he knows his stuff about this and all the different things it has. Um, so, I know it's got Rolls-Royce C8 engines, and this is a diesel hydraulic DMU so you can just put it in drive but it can also work with mechanical sets as well here, here in a Rolls Royce engine on a DMU quite a rare occurrence especially in today's age so as Michael was saying these are Rolls Royce I've had a chat to John and from what I can remember from that little chat uh, the way it drives is there's a um, a transmission with blades in it that's full of oil and as the engine goes faster there's a torque multiplier that happens in that setup that then drives the wheels so then the lower the two different rpms the less torque you get so it's a little bit like an automatic and from what i've gathered from him there's the blades inside a kind of a casing on the engine side then there's a set of uh, steel blades and then another set of moving blades that connect that then connect to the axle. So that is a brief summary, just to interject from Michael, of how this works. Correct me if I'm wrong, as I did get a very quick um, overview from John. But yeah, just a little bit of intricacies with actually how this gets power from the engines to the wheels. A little bit different from a diesel mechanical unit, and um, it doesn't need a gearbox because of that. Moving on, as you'll see, the underframe is quite well filled under here compared to a normal DMU that's mainly just because everything is a lot bigger especially the engines, fans, 
etc. Like I say, this will work with um, blue square units, which it is currently coupled to a 108. Its original partner being the rare class 105, so quite a rare pairing here. Um, but it is paired with the 108 for the time being, while the 105 is currently having an overhaul. And as for horsepower on this beast, she's got more than a standard driving car, which only has 300. I'm not sure of an exact figure, but they are pushing higher numbers as they used to operate as a four car set, as I mentioned in our video in there. Right guys, so here we are in a one of two surviving driving trailers of a class 105. This one here based at Langilfram Railway. As you'll see, it's got a rather interesting cab with the cab desk slanted um, at an angle. So it makes for interesting driving and nice two big windows to view out of. It's certainly an interesting unit. And then moving on into the interior. This is currently having a full overhaul restoration. It's had new panelling, formica cleaned up and put back. It's having new heater ducting, it's had new wood. It's had a whole new lower half skin of steel outside. It's really having the whole Monty done with it. Uh, it's also had lots of wizardry done with the electronics by John, because he is a master of that on DMUs. Moving through here. As you can see, it's a, it's a bit of a uh, work site at the minute because, like I say, it is having a restoration. So this is what a few DMUs around the country, especially ours, are looking like. Um, going through here, more of the same for mica. Um, as this is all reproduction for mica, which you wouldn't really tell the difference. And it does look lovely. A similar sort of approach we're going to go for. Um, is the high pressure laminate stuff that they have used. It's excellent stuff, doesn't need the wood backing like Formica, which can fail. Moving through the unit again, here you see partition walls. Another interesting variant to a DMUs, they're all different in some way, shape, or form. And then to the back of the unit, which is still getting panelled out, as you can see, all in progress in these units. Um, the back wall is still as our unit is currently, bare steel, and then it sort of progresses through to insulation and then panelled, which just shows you the stages of DMU restoration, which is uh, quite a task. Right guys, so we have got a bit of power, electric electricity-wise, 
to the 105 and uh, she's got a little bit of life in her. Uh, something that will be nice to see in the future. More of the big windows, sort of a very interesting looking unit. Also has a two character route indicator which is something uh, seen on some of the older types of DMUs which is quite nice. Um, this was again another early withdrawal just like the 127 so it was largely original when it was um, when it was preserved. Moving, moving back now, as you'll see here, the unit has had its lower half skin replaced because I imagine this was very rotten. The top does generally tend to survive a lot better on these things than the lower halves. They just seem to rot out at the bottoms. As you'll have seen with our DMU, they all rot in different places. Um, thankfully, not so much cant rail disease with this one. So lots of, just lots of exterior panelling that has happened on this, um, which has obviously resulted in the interior being replaced and just a whole full thorough restoration being carried out, which such a rare vehicle really does deserve. Moving back further, more things like Smith heaters underneath, bogies, but for a trailer car, again, another different type of bogey, um, say compared to our centre car. Um, as all these vehicles are unique in some way or another. And then moving right round to the corridor, which has been removed to be overhauled. And then the back end, which has had some work. And that is just a corridor cover for now while the vehicle is being restored. Yeah, this is the Class 105. Right guys, so that draws to a close this episode of Rail Car Restorers on the Road and the Langoflin Railway DMU Gala of 2023. So yeah, we would uh, really like to say a big thank you to the people that made this video happen. Uh, there's quite a lot of shots that are more difficult to get and to get into a lot more uh, intricate places. So we'd like to say thank you to them. They know who they are. You know, we're really appreciative for, uh, you know, letting us get behind the scenes and you know being able to bring this content to you we uh, we really appreciate it and uh, yeah if uh, i haven't already included some you know pure sound shots they'll be included uh, for a little bit of b-roll at the end here yeah it's been a great weekend uh, four different sets on offer uh, the 108 set the 108 127 combo the uh, unique 109 two car wickham's and of course that noisy 104 beast, very, very, very entertaining that is indeed. Uh, great views through the D Valley, I can heartily recommend people coming to give this a go, especially behind um, a heritage first generation DMU, which give you the uh, best views uh, of the line. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next very exciting video.